Hello, this is Dr. Matthew Thomas of the Vermont Department of Health, and this webinar is for facilities interested in learning about or creating a surveillance program. Surveillance is a specific way to track diseases or conditions in a population. A uh, powerful aspect of surveillance is its simplicity. Once you've established your surveillance goals, uh, the actual process can be as simple as uh, using a handwritten line list. So developing your surveillance goals can also be simple. Before implementing a surveillance program, uh, ask yourself, what are my facility's goals for creating this program? Some, ex some examples include establishment of baseline rates for diseases or conditions, rapid identification of outbreaks, assessment of disease interventions, improvement of patient outcomes, guidance of clinical treatment, and satisfying regulatory standards. Once you've established those surveillance goals, it's important to apply a standard case definition in order to get useful results. It's also important to use both numerator and denominator data. For example, if you decide to track the number of MRSA patients in the ICU over a given period of time, it's also important to track the total number of patients in the ICU during that given time who are susceptible to a MRSA infection. Developing a standard case definition can be done by asking the following questions. Who, what, where, when, and how? Who is the population you wish to track in order to achieve your surveillance goals? For example, if you're performing surveillance for an MDRO like MRSA, you may want to select high-risk patients, for example, like those with recent antibiotic use, those with a recent stay in the ICU, those with an indwelling device, those who may have had a recent surgical procedure, and those with a history of infection or colonization with an MDRO. Ask yourself what infection or disease condition you are interested in tracking. For example, you can track MRSA, VRE, or C. difficile. Where should you track this disease or condition in order to have the largest impact? Some examples include a long-term care facility or an intensive care unit. When will surveillance be most useful or practical? Some examples may include upon admission, at discharge, or during transfer from a specific facility. Finally, how might you best track a particular illness or condition? Some examples of data sources that can be useful uh, for surveillance include medical records, culture or lab tests, incident reports, interviews, ADT data, clinical symptoms, x-ray results and observations, as well as many, many others. So remember, surveillance is a way to track diseases or conditions over time. It's important to apply a standard methodology in order to get valid and useful results. Uh, you want to take into account your resources. If your resources are better spent elsewhere, then surveillance may have to wait. Also remember that surveillance definitions do not e necessarily equal clinical de definitions. Surveillance definitions are used for tracking disease, and they're not used for clinical decision making. Finally, ask help from VDH. The Vermont Department of Health has a number of individuals who can help you set up a surveillance program to meet your facility's needs. Thank you.